folks, another edition here of Crancis Corner, a special one here as we bring on Marty Smith from ESPN, his first time here on Crancis Corner. Marty, first off, happy Monday and welcome to Crancis Corner. Thanks for the time. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for having me and uh, and the platform to share. I appreciate you. It's great to be with you. Absolutely. We're going to get to it in just a second. Game change is a, a big thing Marty's working with now. Go GameChange.com's website. We're going to let him get into all that here in just a second. Uh, I want to start with this, Marty. What a wild start to the college football season for the state of Florida. Uh, more than and in, in general, but just here in the state of Florida, uh, we got Florida State, who uh, after the first couple of weeks of the season, I had no idea what's going on with them. Florida, the same thing. Miami looks like a powerhouse. It's really a, a crazy start for here, but let's start with Miami. Big win over South Florida, 50 to 15. It's amazing how much better this team is because they got great recruiting class the last couple of years, but it certainly helps when you bring in a guy like Cam Ward to lead this team. It's amazing what's happening with Miami right now. It really is. Mario and his staff have done a great job. And the fact that, that Cam Ward chose Miami uh, was really a statement in the first place. And then he's done nothing but be absolutely fantastic, not just in his command of what they want to do offensively and using his athleticism, but it's obvious too the way that he has engaged his teammates and really been not just uh, a leader by example and an inspiring uh, uh, example for those guys, but also uh, engaging them in, in every facet of his life. And that matters uh, in, a, in a moment when you're trying to build a culture, if you're Coach Cristobal, and certainly he's been important from that perspective, a, a great start from Miami, man. And if you look at that schedule, Ooh. it's to say it's favorable this year <laughs> is right. a colossal understatement because right. Uh, look, right now Louisville's the only ranked opponent that they have remaining. That certainly could change, but I picked Clemson to win the league before the season started. And I feel like Dabo's team is really starting to find its identity defensively. Right. They're elite nationally. And their quarterback, Cade Klubnick, is, I think, really starting to figure it out. They might face one another in the ACC championship. Now, I'll tell you this, Zach. Holy cow. Mm -hmm. Miami plays my Virginia Tech Hokies on Friday. That's right. Might need to send a couple up, brother. Um, <laughs> right, right. It hadn't been the, the – it, it's been a bit of a difficult start in Blacksburg with tremendous expectations coming into the year. Uh but Miami, I think, is is certainly a playoff contender. If you look at how talented they are on both sides of the ball, I think, according to Coach Cristobal, they're going to get a couple very important players back this week. Right. And that only makes it more difficult on Virginia Tech. But they're good, and their schedule's helpful. Yep, absolutely. Schedule definitely helps out this year and bringing Cam Ward and everything. And I want to go back to something you said before because – Cam Ward, one of the first stories we heard down here when obviously the NIL money was coming down here and Cam Ward was getting his share of it in the beginning. I think one of the first things he did, and what a smart move, and Marty, you've been around college football for a very long time as well. He took all the offensive linemen out for a big foga to right. chow, meat, dinner. It's one of those Brazilian steakhouses, Marty, where you could just walk in there and they just bring you the I thought it was a genius move. Get all the big uglies up front right on your side by taking them out to a very expensive, nice buffet dinner. Genius move by Cam Ward to start things out down there. Exactly how you do it. I mean, it is it is a master class right. in how to take these guys that don't know you to show them that you're going to lead with selfless, a selfless kind approach. And then they see what you're about between the lines, that you're an absolute dog between the lines. Right. And then – they're gonna run. They're gonna run through walls for you, and that's who he is. And I thought this was so interesting to me. I was talking to the Miami staff ahead of the first game. I had Miami week one, right, right, against the University of Florida when they just beat the brakes off Oof. of Coach Napier and the Gators. And I love talking to the staff. I love. They said, "Look, he is self-made. People lavish praise on him." But Cam is only about the work. As you guys all know, one offer, incarnate word. Right. One offer. And then, you know, of course, he goes to state out in Pullman, and now he's over in, in Miami and has just developed so well. 
And, I mean, look, if you just look at the Heisman odds, it tells you all you really want to know. That's right. That's right. It's totally right there. And now the mock drafts are coming out, and Cam Ward's on top of some of those mock drafts also. So it shows a lot what uh, what the scouts and what people are thinking about Cam Ward right now. Um, so you said it before, and let's say Miami does pull off the ACC. Are they a national title threat? You think when we get down to this this playoff scenario that they could be in it? Because, of course, every year, and Marty, like I said, I know you've been around, especially the SEC and a lot of the football. It's Alabama, it's Georgia, it's Ohio State, the, the, the norm, Clemson. Those are the four norms, basically, in the last 15 years of college football. I don't know if Miami is necessarily up there in the kind of echelon there, but they're close, at least this year, with the roster they have. I think people would have said the same thing about Florida State last year at this juncture. Good and call. they went und- they went undefeated right. and had an opportunity to make the college football playoff, ultimately were not voted in. Um, We'll get to the Knowles in a minute, I'm sure. But right. um, I think at this point with a 12-team playoff and then the opportunity to win the ACC and then right. potentially get a first-round bye – Look, man, I, I think it's I think absolutely as we sit here four weeks into the season, things right. can change. Injuries could happen. Who knows? But they look really good, man. Mm-hmm. And uh do that to me, do they look as good as maybe this SEC school or that Big Ten school? In my mind, I say, oh no. Right. But maybe I'm wrong. I could absolutely be wrong because they look really good. I was so impressed with them against Florida. Right. They did it. What a hell of a game. You're right. They go in there in a very difficult environment with a team that Billy Napier had told me all week, this is a different group. You're going to see it. You're going to see it out of this group. And then Ward had his way. Mm. I mean, he went up and down the football field to quote Coach Saban, like poo through a tin horn. <laughs> and it was a signature win, in my opinion, for Mario and his group. Yeah. And so, yes, I think as we sit here, it's fair to say they're a national title contender. Yeah. Well, the other two schools you brought them both up, <clears throat> excuse me, Florida and Florida State, uh, not the greatest starts to either one of these team seasons uh, this year, especially Florida State coming off last year. And like you said with Billy, and Florida, I thought there'd be a little bit different, uh, at least in the start of the season. That schedule's rough. I know we talk about it all the time. That's fine, but you still got to get out there and play those games each week. Uh, those two teams in particular, uh, you talked a little bit about Florida just now, but what about Florida State? What a weird way they've started their season. To me, Zach, I think what I what kind of my takeaway right now is I think this really reminds us, first of all, how good Jordan Travis is. I'm glad you said it. Thank you. Thank you. Mario. And uh, just a just a generational type of player in that system that Coach Norvell wants to run. And he had great weapons uh, with Keon uh, Coleman and, and and that guy, those guys, a good running back, a really good offensive line. And oh, by the way, last year they sent some dudes on the defensive front to the NFL too. Right. Right. And so. You come back this year, I think with DJ, you coming in, uh, all of us went, okay, this is going to be DJ's opportunity to really show us that he is a guy with elite potential and can be dominant. And we just haven't seen it so far. Right. And so to me, ultimately it comes down to, damn, Jordan Travis was a dude. <laughs> and so I, I'm surprised. I'm surprised. I, I am. Uh, I know Coach Norvell is is extremely frustrated to start a season zero and three, and and fortunately they got one now, right? Uh, in Doak, and so there's something to build on now. But yep. with the expectation, how many people nationally had Florida State as their ACC preseason champion? Oh a yeah, a lot. I'm sure a ton. Right. I'm a sure lot. a ton. So, now it's about building blocks for Coach Norvell and making sure those guys understand it's every rep and every day. And I don't care how cheesy it sounds. I'm a guy who loves that stuff. It's what wins. Right. And they know that now. Absolutely. And you don't have to tell the people down here in Coral Gables what a quarterback means to a team. Look what happened. Like right. you said before, when you bring Cam Ward here or Jordan Travis leaves, like there's a lot to do in college football with that quarterback. All right, one more before I get to uh, uh, to game change. Alabama, Georgia this weekend. I mean, you want to talk about heavyweight championship fights. You want to talk about 
one of the biggest games of the entire season. I don't care if you like both teams, you hate both teams, you hate the SEC or you love the SEC. This is a heavyweight championship bout on Saturday, and I'm looking so forward to it just as a football fan. I don't have any, you know, anyone in the fight. Don't care who wins this game. Don't care who loses. But I love watching good college football, and we should see it Saturday. As am I. It's parents' weekend at oh, wow. for my son. Um, and I told him, look, he wants to uh, go to a, a dinner with a bunch of his buddies and their parents. I'm like, great. They need to have a TV. That's right. And cold beer <laughs> because I have, uh, I have the Oklahoma Auburn game on the plains. And, uh, of course game day will be at, uh, Alabama as right. well. But I have been to both schools extensively this year already to sit down both quarterbacks. I've had lengthy conversations with both quarterbacks, both head coaches. And I think on paper you look at, okay, Georgia has the established culture, Kirby's got it humming. He's got NFL talent on every level at every position. They have so much depth. I don't know what's going to happen, man. First of all, I'm the worst prognosticator in the history of <laughs> of, of picking games. I'd be number two then. If you're one, I'm, I'm so two, bad, man. Right, right. <laughs> but but I'll tell you, this can be a great football game. Yeah. And it's going to be an extremely physical game. And I don't know what's going to happen, but I know that. The evolution of both of these quarterbacks, we, you and I were just talking about it with Cam Ward. It's the most important position in sports. Right. It's the most important position in college football. And you have two guys. First of all, let's just start with Carson Beck. The patience. The willingness to sit, watch, learn, grow, evolve. And he had his job taken from him a couple of years ago. Stetson Bennett took it. That's Stetson right. Bennett went and wrote a movie. Won a couple of national titles as a former walk-on. The whole thing. But Carson was patient. Right. And now, in a lot of minds, he's going to be a top pick in the NFL draft coming up. He's great. He's had a little bit of a slow start. Right. But he's great. All right, now on the other side of the ball, Jalen Milrow. He gets benched last year and then writes his own movie. Evolves, develops, leads Alabama to the SEC championship in the Rose Bowl. And he told me that Rose Bowl game, when he doesn't feel, when he doesn't feel, when he doesn't feel like working hard, or it hit, hit, hits, it hits in his mind. I'm not sure I want to do this today. BS. He thinks about that Rose Bowl and the burn and right. the frustration of that final play. And he told me, okay, a lot of people go, okay, well, Kalen DeBoer comes in. He's still building his culture. I think it happened real quick. And Jalen was telling me about his first meeting with Coach DeBoer, in which he walks into the meeting. They sit down. Coach DeBoer says, you don't have to do something special to be special. And wow. I believe in you. And he said to me, Jalen said to me, it's the first time in his football journey, Zach, anybody has said to him, I believe in you. Wow. And he got emotional saying it to me. I got goosebumps. Right. right. And again, I'm a nerd about that stuff. Yeah, me I too. I love that stuff. A lot of people go, oh, well, I love it. And it matters because I'm someone who deeply believes in the power of feeling seen, feeling heard, feeling uh, the senses of hope and belonging. And that's what that does. Hey, I believe in you, man. Right. And so I think this is going to be one hell of a dog fight down there in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I'll be there. I'm going down there tomorrow night, as you and I sit here. Right. I'm going down there Tuesday night. I'll be doing live reporting all day Wednesday from T-Town ahead of that game. And so – Buckle up, baby. It's going to be a good one. <laughs> I'm excited. You got me all excited. That, literally, <laughs> we should just take the last 90 seconds and put it on like the cameo as the preview for the game. Rick, Look at this. Look it. at these goosebumps. Good God, Marty. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. All right, Marty, I could talk college football and ball with you all day long. I, I love talking ball with you. I am intrigued totally by what's going on right now with you in the background. Game change. Go gamechange.com. Uh, that's where you could sign up for everything. But tell everyone all about this. When I was reading everything about it, Marty, I had to have you on to talk about it. Well, thank you. It's a fascinating concept. I wish I thought of it. All you do is go to gogamechange.com. That's gogamechange.com. Input your credit or debit card of choice and then choose the university you love. And then every single purchase you make moving forward with that credit or debit card that you input it into gogamechange.com, every purchase is automatically rounded up to the next dollar. That difference then goes directly to the athletic department that you chose. 
and the athletic department takes that funding and they disperse it how they so choose. Look, Zach, I don't care if you're Michigan, Ohio State, Texas, Texas A&M, these schools with abundance of resource. Right. You're still trying to get money. Sure. You're trying to figure out how to pay the players to bolster your facilities, to, to make your teams more competitive, and this is a way for all of us to do it. And it's not just those big universities. I think about my alma mater, Radford University. Right. Small D1. It's about survival. And so this is a way for all of us to contribute to our athletic departments and help bolster them financially in this transactional, transformative moment of college sports. Again, gogamechange.com, input your credit or debit card of choice, choose the University of Miami or Florida State or the University of Florida. The money goes straight there. You also, by the way, um, enter yourself for cash prizes and it's considered a charitable donation. Right. So it's a tax write-off. So can't lose, man. No. It's a great initiative, and I wish I thought of it. Right. I mean, <laughs> it, Marty, let me tell you, reading all about it, I was like, this is exact. You don't have to be the booster guy that owns 14 car dealerships right. to be the guy here. Just go do your normal thing. Go shopping. Go do whatever it is, and make sure you use that app. Game Change. Go GameChange.com is the website. Go over there. Check it all out. Sign up. Like Marty said, get your favorite school on board and help out as much as you can at that point. Marty, we'll do it again. I will talk ball with you whenever you want. And this game changing, I can't wait to hear how great it and how big it's become in a couple months. I know it's going to be big. This is going to be big stuff for you. And I really, really enjoy just talking ball with you, Marty. It's good stuff. You gave me goosebumps twice. You did it. I appreciate you, brother. So grateful to spend this time with you. And thank you for the platform to share. And uh, have a wonderful week. It's a great week of college football, that's for yes, sure. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And we got Friday night, like I said, down here in Miami, Tuscaloosa on Saturday. Woo, we got a big week of college football. Marty, thanks for your time today on Krantz's Corner. We'll do it again soon. Be well, brother. All right, the great Marty Smith from ESPN joining me here on Krantz's Corner.